Some more white reishi here. And this would be fairly young, eh, judging from the color? Yeah, it's pretty new. Out here with Jasmine. Her and Byron are, are going to lead us through the series. Now I see stumps up this way too, Jasmine. Yeah. Yeah. Where's Byron to? I'm not sure. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. We just found a nice uh, patch of Gammadermis, which is also known as red reishi. Unfortunately, this is not uh, fresh it's from last year. Uh, we're hoping to see some signs of it starting to come back out. I don't know if you can get over here and see this little... Little baby. This little piece right here. There we go. That's our little piece there. So we're hoping that's where the new one's going to come out. The rest of them are pretty much gone. You can see where they are already spored. Uh, well, we can find some spore tracks around here. There's somebody, let's see. What'll happen when they spore, uh, they're a polypore. So it'll open up underneath the holes and all the little spore, which is basically a spawn comes out, falls to the ground and it helps the mycelium spread out and consume the entire tree, which it already has. This would not be here in a fruiting body unless this tree was already full of mycelium from the Gammadermis. This particular Gammadermis, can't tell you the exact species of it, we're in Newfoundland, so what I've been told by a lot of people that uh, it's its own. We're kind of like the Galapagos Islands, so where we evolved our own, this particular species of Gammadermis, until it's actually analyzed, we won't know exact properties that are in it. Uh, this, by the way, is the number one mushroom used in China for pretty much cancer, uh, all ailments, arthritis, there's immune modulizers in there, uh, beta-glucans, uh, triterpenes, diterpenes, it pretty much has, a, it's a king of the mushrooms. People said Chaga's king of the mushrooms, arguably red reishi would be uh, in a close tie, if not even a little more up there as far as the Dumb. bracket fungus go. The mushroom of immortality, they call it. The mushroom of immortality. And on the other side, we have a real treat because we have some turkey tail. All right. You want to go around Should the I jazzy? Around? Yeah, 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 to get a good look at it. Yeah, because there's a couple of pieces in here. Pretty well everywhere. This is all turkey tail. There's a good shot right there, kind of, of the colors. Now you can get multiple colors. Sometimes there's a bit of greens and blues and maybe a little bit of grays in there. Um, turkey tail is really good for uh, cancer prevention and it's a great cancer fighter and also helps to uh, reverse the side effects of chemotherapy. Um, you can use it in a tea or you can grind it and sprinkle it in your food. But um, this is one of the most common mushrooms that you see when you're walking through the forest. So if you've ever been on a hike in the woods, you probably run into turkey tail at some point or another. That's a close-up picture of your Gammadermis. Uh, Gammadermis is Greek for shiny skin. So this is a Gammadermis species. There's probably, as far as I know, there's probably 15 different species of the Gammadermis. So this particular one, unless we had to analyze, it wouldn't be able to, it might be its own species of its own, but it's in the Gammaderma genus. Wow. So the shiny skin is mostly all gone off. Let me shine it up, see that? Wow, and it has an arm on it. Nice. That's the only bracket fungus you're gonna find with an actual arm on it. All other bracket funguses are just flat across. Nice. So that's it. There's a nice shot of the mycelium in the tree over here. So look at this. That's the mycelium. So the actual mushroom is like an apple. It's just the fruiting body. And the, the actual organism is right there. The mycelium can take, what, a year or more to engulf the entire tree and then from there it starts to fruit. Beautiful. Quite a specimen. And that's like brand new. Wow. Gammadermis. Wow. All this brown on here, see the color from there to there? Yeah. That's spores. Oh, so the one on top of this spored, now that's full of spores. 
This is unreal. The amount of reishi that's here? I mean, that's... Because I'm pretty sure there was only maybe four or five last time. I don't know how it would fruit so fast and then be gone. Well... Even with the... It'd be shiny, right? Environmental factors too, hey? And I mean, so technically in this area, there should be more uh, gamma somewhere in this area. Here, all these little craters looks like slugs or something got at it. Oh, could have been killed by slugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, slugs. see right there. Oh, crazy. And we have those tiger slugs up here. Yeah. Okay, I'm out here with uh, Byron and, and Jasmine. And we've, uh, not discovered, I guess we found about 15 uh, different types of mushrooms already. And uh, a good, good find here. What would you call that? That's a woolly chanterelle. So they're 100% edible. And saying that, never eat a mushroom you're not 100% identified with an expert, so. Um, can we take the bigger one out to show the bulb? Yep, absolutely. We get a side profile. Now, when you're picking mushrooms, it doesn't matter if you cut it or you pull it because you're not gonna damage the mycelium. Like I said, the mushroom is just a fruiting body. Same as picking an apple off a tree. So you see they have a hole in the center there, kind of a funnel shape. Yep. Mm -hmm. See the gills outside? So it's a gilled mushroom, it's not a polypore like the other ones we were looking at. And it's also a trumpet, so mushroom. Wow. Wicked. Wow. We've, we've been flat out in here finding mushrooms that bleed blue, bleed orange. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Who also... would have known that mushrooms even bleed? Yeah, exactly. And a lot that we haven't identified yet, which we'll do some homework going tonight. <laughs> yeah. Kind of a fruitopia of uh, mycelium up here, especially all the rain we've had in the last uh, month or so. And the mycelium network doesn't really grow without the uh, without the rain. So west coast of Newfoundland is west coast is the best coast. <laughs> <laughs> the bounty coast. Yeah. Is there a strap there somewhere? It's okay. Oh, sorry. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Seems like this is a path of mushrooms. We got more mushrooms in here. Oh, hard to tell what that one is, God. Oh. More mushrooms right here. What are they? That looks possibly a bullet, right? That's a bullet. It's a bullet, he brews blue. He brews blue, yeah. I'll it's show blue you. Blue. So when you cut this type of bullet, I'm not sure of the name, but it does bruise blue when it oxidizes. See? Yeah. Right here we have Indian pipe or ghost pipe, a couple of different names. Most things have 10 or 15 different names on it. Uh, the main ingredient in this is a nervine, nervine which is a pain reliever. Uh, so what people normally do, they make a uh, topic out of it or a tincture. So what you do, you would dry it out and I believe it's 100% alcohol or 90% proof. You would need to uh, finish the topical for it. Great pain reliever. A uh, substitute for opium too. Dang. Same effects as like opium. Quite interesting, so you're stuck in the woods, you need some pain reliever. There you Grab go. Grab yourself some Indian pipe. Ghost pipe or Indian pipe? Or corpse plant. Okay, so just a little recap on the gamma dermis, red reishi, uh, the beta glucans that I mentioned in this, which is actually immune modulizers. So if your immune system is too high overactive, like people with uh, osteoarthritis, it'll actually bring your immune system down to regulate it. Or if you have an inactive immune system, it'll bring it up. It knows exactly what to do. Uh, the triterpenes in this is anti-inflammatory. So anybody with things like IBS or any kind of inflammation of the joints, anything, that's what the triterpenes will do. So that's basically your two main ingredients of the red ratio. Guys, what do we have here? This is the infamous Newfoundland Golden Chanterelle. Beautiful as that. I have one here full. That's kind of what it looks like. 
Well, not kind of. That's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> nice. Kind of a funnel shape. They're, uh, they're hard to mistake for anything else, so they're pretty easy to identify. Um, great beginner mushroom. Great beginner mushroom, bright orange. Again, never consume any mushroom unless you know exactly what it is. You got a slug on that one? Yeah, the slugs really love them. These are a delicacy in a, in a lot of countries. Uh, the nutritional value is off the chart, tree roof, beta glucans. Is, it's one of the best mushrooms you can actually eat as far as for beta glucans and uh, nutrients, actually. Wow.